I'd like to introduce you to the car plus strong pluck string algorithm. This is one of my favorite algorithms. It's fairly simple to implement and it just produces a really nice sounding result. It's based on a delay line of n samples in length. The delay line accepts samples at one end. Uh, essentially think of it as passing through a buffer and then the samples pop out the other end and this operates at your system sampling frequency. The output of the delay line passes through a low pass filter which in turn is fed back around to the essentially the input of the delay line again. We also add in uh, an external input signal X of N and X of N is defined as a pulse of noise and this white noise is of sufficient length that it fills the delay line entirely but then X of N has to shut off immediately. So the idea then is that we somehow get noise into the delay line and then let that signal circulate through this closed loop. As it passes through the loop, each pass uh, basically steals a little bit of the high frequency energy due to the existence of the low pass filter. And what you'll see on the output Y is something that is uh, essentially a quasi periodic signal where it starts out as a fairly wide band sort of signal at the beginning and then um, it converges more to a sinusoidal sort of signal when it's done. Now to explore this in a little more quantitative detail, the pitch of the output signal Y ultimately is determined by the period of the signal and that's called the loop time defined as tau. We have N samples and the sampling interval would be the reciprocal of the sampling frequency and I'll call that sampling interval delta T. Then again we could rewrite that in terms of the sampling frequency if you like. The frequency then is the reciprocal of the period And we have the reciprocal of our loop time, which is then sampling frequency over n. And you can see from that basic equation that a higher pitch requires a shorter delay line. Another issue that we see has to do with our pitch resolution. It becomes increasingly coarse as the value of n gets smaller. As you can tell, a change from 2 to 3 is uh, fairly significant in terms of the frequency compared to say a change from 200 to 201. The low pass filter can be fairly simple. I'm using a two point averager. You can generalize this a bit by saying that the low pass filter is computing the weighted sum of the present input and the past input. And of course the past input is our x of n minus 1. And I'm using the notation here y sub l and x sub l to specifically indicate the input of and output of the low pass filter. As I say, if the if you're truly doing a two point average, then G would be 0.5, and you can alter the rate at which the output damps out based on this scale factor G. We need the value of G to be between zero and 0.5 for purposes of stability but uh, smaller values of G will cause the output to damp out faster.